a lot. So, the best I can tell you is take a quiz and whatever else is up there. You guys ready? So, what I like to do is uh, go over a proportion problem. And if you guys remember, when we were first dealing with proportions, actually, let's make this a two part step. Um, let's just do this one. So, if I was going to do this problem, um, if you guys remember, we worked on undoing division by multiplying. And when we multiplied on both sides, what we figured out was that um, I'm multiplying each fraction by the other denominator. So an easier kind of process we figured out was what we call cross multiplying, where you kind of can circle your cross products. And what you're going to do is you're going to find the product of these, which is called your cross products. So I can multiply 5 times 6, and I can multiply x minus 3 times 10. And don't forget, there's an equal sign that's still there. A lot of students lose their equal sign, and they're like, I don't know where it went. Make sure you guys keep your equal sign, because it's still part of it. Caitlin, you write it? All right. You ready? If we didn't already get it done correctly. All right. So here's where students start to make their mistakes. Now, if you didn't take your test and you're talking right now, then you probably would make the same mistake. First thing, 5 times 6 is 30. Equals. Now, this says x minus 3 times 10. All right? That means I'm multiplying x minus 3. That is like together. They're not separate, they're together. This whole expression, x minus 3, I'm multiplying by 10. So right now, this just shows 3 times 10. So to represent x minus 3 times 10, I need to put it in parentheses. Therefore, I can kind of get rid of the multiplication sign. So this is kind of 10, or x minus 3 now, times 10. When I have it now in this form, I know I can use distributed property, where whenever you have a number outside of parentheses, then I know, and there's no other addition or subtract sign, I know I'm going to be using multiplication. So I multiply the 10 times the x and the 10 times the negative 3. So I get 30 equals 10x minus 30. Now I need to get everything away from the x. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 30. Therefore, I obtain 60 equals 10x. Now the next thing I need to do is divide by 10. Therefore, x equals 6. So just remember, when you're multiplying an expression, you know, x minus 3, that, that whole expression is being multiplied by 10. A lot of students just multiply the 10 times the 3. That's where they make the mistake. Multiply that 10 times both terms. All right? That's it.